Welcome back to Locked On Chiefs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. We're with you today as the Chiefs are coming back from their win against the Green Bay Packers, one that is stored. We appreciate you making us your first listen today. We are going to get into where is this offense at? Did, did the end of the game change anything for you? Has this defense turned it around for real, or was it a couple of standout performances? And who were those standout performances? We're going to get to it all right here on Locked On Chiefs. From the land of the free and the home of the Chiefs, this is the Locked On Chiefs podcast. Well, this is all nifty and new. Right. Hey, Chris got in the show today. I like it. Yeah, I'm sure you do like it. I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. So, uh, yeah, that's exactly why things seem weird. Uh, I think I cut you off, but no big deal. Uh, I don't think that the game changed. The end of the game changed anything for me. I'll, although I will say, I think the defense is playing better. We need to address that uh, at some point in today's show. But I really wish that I would feel better about Steve Spagnuolo learning from past mistakes. And I just don't know that I feel like he's there yet. Yeah, I mean, when Shannon Sharp is pointing out on, and I'm not one to follow you know, the media, that much the talking heads that are really saying things for ratings but when Shannon Sharp is able to point out just how blatantly confused the defense is when when a certain player comes into it and we're not here to bash on Dan Sorensen it just happens to be not playing well and then the truth has to be the truth but that is I think the stubborn streak that you see in the coaching staff on both sides yeah and I think the other thing is Seth pointed out earlier on Twitter uh at some point you have to start getting mad at the coach, not at the player. And I think that's really where my uh, feelings are right now is that he, at this point, we know what Daniel Sorensen is. The coaching staff has to know what Daniel Sorensen is and they keep going back to the well. So that's really on them more than it really is on Daniel Sorensen at this point. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you can only do what you can do. And folks, if you are new to the show and we do have a lot of new listeners um, Chris Clark, Clark handles all the cap stuff, understands how the team is built. I am a, an old strength and conditioning coach. It's one of those things where we see the game from opposite aspects, but it all does come down to some of these decision-making things. And especially when I was still in coaching, it was, this was not uncommon to have, you know, this, this quandary of a certain player getting time when he's not in a position to really affect the team in a positive way, but there's a trust factor. There's a knowledge factor. It's also a little bit of legitimizing what your defense is doing if you're Steve Spagnuolo by having somebody out there that you feel is going to be in position to do things. It's just that the physical capabilities aren't what they used to be. Yeah, and I think – but the problem is is that if you realize that and you see that on a week-to-week basis, you can't continue to put them out there. You have to figure out some other thing. You have to change your defensive scheme – to address the issues that he is causing you to have because you're just putting yourself in a situation where you can't win. Because if let's face it, if Green Bay finds a way to score 14 points on Sunday, they probably win that game because Kansas City's offense was that bad at times throughout that game. It, it really was. And, and we'll get into the offense here in the next segment. But from a team standpoint, it's not just spags. It's at some point, Andy has to like shrug off his normal persona of letting the DC run the defense and trying not to stick his head in there. My guess is, my gut feeling is that he hasn't been, Andy Reid has not been the, the proponent that has been putting Dan Sorensen back onto the field continually in, in an effort to try to keep him out there. My guess is at this point, somewhere at some point, Andy's going to have to step in and say, listen, you got to play your best at every position, period, and give up on who's performed for you in the past, who you think knows it best, and who just isn't physically capable at this point. The scary thing to me, though, is that maybe this is Kansas City's best. Nah. <laughs> nah. I, I understand why you say that, but they see the they see the players on a, on a daily basis, and we only see them on game day. Uh, Armani Watts, we haven't seen play, and with the position that they're putting Daniel Sorensen in on most times, I wouldn't want to see Watts in that position because they're usually playing Sorensen as a linebacker on third downs. But if they're going to use him in a situation where they put him up against a wide receiver, that's a completely different issue, and you have to address that. There has to be a switch there. I I agree with you. When he's lined up inside the box and he can do that well, he blitzed well. He got as many pressures yesterday as both Frank Clark and Melvin Ingram. 
He blitzes well. He can still do that and help this team. I completely agree with you there. But you have to be able – he's not a jack-of-all-trades anymore. And you can't – you have to be able to differentiate that and not cross it over and get yourself burnt. And that's really what's going on here. It's you got to let go of what it's been in the past at this point or this season is not going to improve. Then again, it, a young quarterback was only able to put up 13 points on them on the whole – they were still within uh, – not even 13 points, sorry. That Seven. Was, that was the Chiefs score. Yeah. Um, if it wasn't for that play, you had a shutout, which is so rare in the NFL that I, I'm – maybe it's because I, I have a defensive mentality. Like, that bothers me. That was a wasted opportunity to actually record a goose egg. Yeah, and I think that it's – we can say that it was going to be shutout. We don't know that it was going to be a shutout. I mean, that got okay. him a first down. It could have been – you can say that. I can say that. Okay. Well, <laughs> with <fair> confidence. <laughs> yeah, I I think that he probably would have been a shutout. I think they would have been going for the end zone or broke no matter what happened at that point in the game. So uh, you're gonna have to stop him on four downs, and that's the reality of the situation. I don't I don't feel comfortable saying it would have been a shutout, but they were in a position to get themselves a shutout, and and I think that's what's frustrating. You look at this team, and they have so many different parts that we need to address going forward on offense and on defense. Uh, but really the reality of it is is that this team has to be hungry. They have to continue to play going forward, and they have to continue to get better, and they have a huge test coming up against the Raiders on Sunday night, and the reality of that game is whoever is the hungriest is going to win that game, and I, you know, that's what it comes down to. The Raiders right now are in first place in the division, but I think the Chiefs have the ability to beat them at least if they play their game and Mahomes is yet to play his game. And that's really what bothers me right now so far. But when you start talking about being hungry, if you have not tried Built Bar yet, I do not know what you're waiting for. Thanksgiving is just right around the corner. And actually, the Chiefs have a bye week around Thanksgiving. So you're going to have a little bit more time to watch football. All the great food and eats and treats and plenty of them, but many of you want a yummy dessert, but isn't so full of calories and sugar. It's a perfect time for Bill Bars. Bill Bar is the new holiday dessert. Feast on something delicious and feel good about it. One slice of pie is upwards of 300 calories, and all, that's on the low end. Most Bill Bars are only 130 calories and only four grams of sugar with plenty of protein. Replace the coconut cream pie with coconut Bill Bar, which is actually coming back out uh, very okay. shortly. The coconut chunk built bar which we've been talking about or go for a raspberry built bar instead of that raspberry pie lots of good flavors to choose from and replace any pie low calorie low carb low fat high protein covered in 100 percent real chocolates there's nothing like a built bar black friday mark your calendar black friday will be a huge event with all sorts of surprises go to build.com and use promo code lock 15 and you'll get 15 percent off your order use promo code lock 15 for 15 percent off at build.com yeah yeah that works there's a couple of standout things, and, and hunger is is a good way to put it. And I know that you know we try to relate it to the sponsor. Thank you, Bill Park. Um, they've been going through a lot with the Raiders as well. Both these teams are kind of hungry to get back yeah. on the right track. They had to release a player this week. You know, the Chiefs are obviously in the middle of their two struggles, players. But, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I didn't. I just, one was just. I didn't expect the second one. Damon Arnett is now out in uh, Las Vegas yeah. as well. Um, Both their picks from 2020. Both their yeah. first round picks from 2020 are now off the team. Right. I'm not trying to laugh at that. That's not funny. Uh, and the reason both are off the team is very valid. Not only did they lose their first round picks from 2020, but they also lost their head coach just a couple of weeks ago. So and those things are completely related. This is Mike Mayock cleaning house and not putting up with the BS anymore. So I think they're directly tied and, it, it helps because you get the idea of, of what's important to each franchise, right? And certainly the Chiefs have been emphasizing the offensive line rebuild. And I just want to take a step back and look at, at week nine because a couple of things stand out to me. Um, this was the first week in my recollection that Joe Tooney actually graded out according to PFF above Creed Humphrey. Now, it's not much, <laughs> but it, it is a slight bump. Neither of them allowed a, a single pressure. And I think that that's important. And obviously, they are two keys to that offensive line. But this was the first time. And you can complain. Like, there's been some speculation about the pass rush, especially off the edge for the Green Bay Packers. Orlando Brown gave up one pressure. That was it. And ended up grading out just nearly right behind Creed Humphrey. And so, like, you see that it's starting. This could be the start of, of what we've been hoping for. 
the the reallocation of Orlando Brown to a more deep setting pass happy offense. Now it's not going to have its its bumps here and there, but this was a step forward in my mind for him. Yeah, I think it definitely was a step forward. And Tooney has been playing with a broken hand, so I think you give him a little bit of a pass. But he's still played well enough. I mean, yeah, he's been he's been graded behind Creed Humphrey, but even you will have to admit you didn't see this kind of kind of season coming from Creed Humphrey. I, I didn't. I mean, I was high on him, but I wasn't. I didn't think this was going to happen. <laughs> I was higher on him than you were. I was. I still wasn't expecting this. I am just absolutely ecstatic about that pick because I think it's changed so much for Kansas City. The issue that they're running into now isn't necessarily the interior of the offensive line. It is Mahomes not trusting the offensive line at times and still having happy feet, still not having the technical savvy that he needs to have when it comes to his feet and being set to make throws. Uh, And he needs to work on that, and that's something that I think – you look at the next two games, and I was thinking about this last night as I was going to bed. Mm-hmm. It is extremely important that they win this game against the Raiders, and I do think it's possible that they could win against the Raiders. It's a divisional game. Anything can happen. I would much rather them win this game this week and lose against the Cowboys, mainly because I think they would need to win both. But I would much rather them win this week, not only because it's divisional, but it's also conference. And that could be a huge factor going into – playoff seating down the road especially yeah. with as many teams is that are in the AFC that Kansas City has already lost to I mean let's let's be real especially with this group and and Trey Smith gave up a couple of pressures no hits no sacks this this was a good day out for him as well and we all know that he's he's been probably the most volatile but he plowed some people too Ex- exactly so you have <laughs> I love it you have a couple of really big highs his, right? how, how far down in the field was his helmet on that play I mean, what was, his his helmet came off, and I think Travis Kelsey was 20 yards downfield bringing it back gonna, to him. I was going to say, somebody else come up with it, right? And that's a good point. And I, I think you have to feel like, no offense to what Las Vegas has been able to do, I, I don't have any expectation of this really being a game. I think the Chiefs have to get up for the rivalry, but I don't see it being that close. Max Crosby's the only guy that's going to give them any serious pass rush. I doubt the rest of that front is going to be able to get, especially with the way these guys are blocking, Man, get Patrick are, off of his spot. You were a lot. You're a lot different than I am. I'm. I'm not so sure that uh, Ngakwe isn't going to give them pressure too. So it'll. I think it's going to the right be, tackle is. Well, yeah, it could. It could. Uh, but if Rimmers is back this week, or if Niang is back, uh, we'll know more about that. It's too early in the week to tell whether or not either of those guys are going to be available. Yeah. Well, let's hope that they are because I think they got to get up and they got to get cruising. They got to put the pedal down to the metal and they need gas to do it. And so do you. So do I. We all need gas. We have an easy way for you guys to save some money. It's with the new app, Get Upside. All of our listeners get 25 cents off of every gallon of gas that they buy when you track it with Get Upside. That is significant savings. And all you got to do is go download the app from either uh, the Google Store or the Apple Store, whatever device you're using. And use the code TOUCHDOWN, and that gets you 25 cents off of every fill-up right there in that app. And right now, they're even giving you a double. So use that code, and you get an extra 25 cents off of every gallon that you put in your car, truck, bus, or whatever you're driving with the GetUpside app. That's 50 cents off total on your first tank. That helps immensely, and it doesn't matter how you want to get that money back. You can get it, uh, what, what is it? Uh, Amazon cards, PayPal, a straight bank account, like any way, anything you can think of, you can probably get it back that way. And all you got to do is download the Get Upside app and use the promo code TOUCHDOWN. It's at every store everywhere. That's for 50 cents off of your first tank and 25 cents off of every gallon of every tank after that. So check out Get Upside. This brings us now to probably the happiest that I've been. Your regularly, your regularly scheduled program with the way you were saying that. Right. Yeah. Right. That too. <laughs> so it, this was two aspects. And um, as much as we saw Nick Bolton really play very well the last couple of weeks, um, I, I thought this is another stubborn thing. We don't have to get into it till tomorrow, probably um, about the linebacker level, but the other two levels, the ones that have been struggling the most finally, Got to the point where they can play off of each other. And yes, this we all understand this was a, this is a young quarterback. This is not Aaron Rodgers. Would the outcome have been different? Yes, very, very much so. And I don't even know if Aaron Rodgers is the guy throwing the ball. If the two standouts for me, 
in Snead and Traverius Ward would have been able to keep up and, and corral Devontae Adams as much as they did. Because when Aaron's throwing Probably the ball, not. you get some more looks. Yeah, you get more looks, but you also get guys that are have chemistry together, and I think that really would have played into it as well. Uh, because Jordan Love and Devontae Adams didn't get a chance to practice together because Devontae Adams is on the COVID list, so that didn't help as well. Right. Um, so, you know, I think there's a, several different things there. Um, I don't know. I I think the frustrating thing for me is watching them put Bolton back at out of the middle linebacker position. And I know we talked about that yesterday. I am still going to be harping on that because I think that's – showing Spagnuolo showing that he cannot let things go. I understand you want Kitchens to be the leader of your defense, but he can lead the defense from the other linebacker position. True. He doesn't need to be the middle linebacker. Fair enough. I, I you'll get no argument from me. And I think you're ta- I think you're putting Bolton in a worse spot number 1 and 2 you're putting your you're hurting yourself for the future as well because Bolton is going to be your middle linebacker next year. Yeah. And, and all that is to say that I, I don't think the run was the the emphasis. They clearly, post-game pressers were telling us that they wanted to take away Devontae Adams, and they did that. The only two PPUs recorded by the Chiefs in this game were Legereus Sneed and Chavarius Ward. That's it. Tyron didn't get one. Thornhill didn't get one. Hitch didn't get one. It was those two guys. And so they they really stood out to me. But on the flip side, they had support from the front. And when you take a look at the pass rush, This is where it becomes evident. Chris Jones back at home against that particular line was clearly very, very effective. Seven pressures on the night out of, I think it was 33 pass rush. And he was shutting down the running game at times too. Yeah. Yeah. And that goes a long way, right? Just, just killing that deep, that offensive line in the interior. And it was great. Uh, And I agree with you. I think the pass rush is very key going forward. And I do think that that's something that we'll need to continue to look at. I'm curious to see if they continue to get the pressure uh, that they got. Obviously, we're looking at all this pressure. Well, they had, what, 51% blitzes, I think yeah. I saw, close to 52%. And that that bears out in the numbers in terms of pressures. Like I said, Sorensen was up there. He, Frank, uh, as well as Melvin Ingram, all produced four pressures. Now, obviously, Sorensen was blitzed on those. So was Ben Neiman because he was the next one with three. So you could see that Spags felt he had to attack him, confuse the, the young QB, and that makes sense. Yep. But the encouraging thing for me is you ended up getting 15 pressures, uh, 16, because Reed got one as well, 16 out of your front four. And that is a building block for guys that have only practiced together a couple of days. I expect that to improve. And I expect actually them to to get a fair number of hits on Derek Carr. Yeah, and I think that that will continue. The, thing, the other thing that I noticed and that we should probably discuss is the fact that Frank Clark played over 80% of the snaps. Mm-hmm. Chris Jones played over 70% of the snaps. Yep. Those those two guys alone playing that many snaps tells you that they're both clo- as close to healthy as they're going to be this time of year. And you're finally seeing them be what we want the, to see them be. The question is now is can Ingram add to what they're already got? And is Jerron Reed going to show up like we were expecting him to that he hasn't so far? I really do think that with the bye week when it is, we could see a completely new team coming out of the bye week than we've seen the first couple of weeks. If they can get the offensive things figured out, if they can find a way to win just one of the next two games, I still think they're in a position to take the AFC West at the end of the season. Yeah, right now with just a half game lead for for the two teams ahead of them, they can change their trajectory significantly this week. That said, the guys that played 100% of the snaps on the defensive side were the safeties and Traverius Ward. So, even though the PBUs came from the corners, the safeties were out there consistently all night long. And and Sneed would have been 100% had he not been right. checked for a concussion. Right. Very, very good point. Uh, so, and, and thank you. He was, I didn't think he had a concussion. I think he was just tired, honestly, but it happens. What are you yep. going to do? Yep. <laughs> I think at the end of the day, having that, that trio and those safeties in particular is something now that I think stabilizes what we've seen out of the corners. If they can have that help at the safety spot, guys that are always there helping them, and this pass rush, I think we can see this defense turn the corner. Again, allowing only seven points, uh, a possibility as a shutout, and I don't care who it was at quarterback. That's a professional football team that you held scoreless for three and a half quarters. So that's significant to me. I expect them to do more of that going forward. 
Yeah, I think that they will continue doing more of that going forward. I, the thing that really bothers me, and, and this is you know kind of something we talked about after we got off the show yesterday, is you know are, is Kansas City going to make a move for OBJ? OBJ went on waivers. Uh, we will find out tomorrow if anybody picked him up. I am not expecting anybody to pick him up because it looks like he is still owed seven and a half million dollars uh, for this year. So Kansas City is obviously out of the question on that, but you start looking at why Kansas city needs more players. Uh, I saw a stat earlier. I think it was McCall Hardman has run 314 routes this year. He's been targeted. I think 56 times he has one touchdown and no games over 73 yards receiving. Yeah. And he's supposed to be their number three weapon. Yeah. And say what you want. Uh, you know, I, I, I love the speed. I'm, I'm glad they have him. I wish they would use him more on sweeps than they do. Uh, Cause I think that it's, I think he could be effective there, but he's not, he's still dropping the ball in instances where you can't afford to have drops. And I, he just isn't their, their, their weapon that they need right now. Yeah. That's a problem. And that's I, why I, that's why I keep pushing to, uh, to hope Josh Gordon is going to be that guy that they're going to go out and get, you know, five or six, you know, targets in the first three or four possessions and, and try to get him going and try to get him involved in this offense because I think it could add so much. I agree. I, I think they have to make a concerted effort, and we'll talk about that with Matt tomorrow, and we'll be back with you later in the week. I hope that you guys enjoyed this one, and there's plenty more as this is a stepping stone, I think. We're going to talk about that as the week goes along. For those of you on YouTube, like, sub, and hit that bell notification, and please leave us something at the iTunes reviews. We want to know how you like the show, what you like, and what you'd like to hear as well. Thanks for your time and listening today, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.